A week ago, NVIDIA launched their RTX 3080 Ti, and I was a little bit confused about the MSRP of this card coming in at 1199. That's where it was starting from. Of course, the most frustrating thing about that launch was the fact that a lot of people just simply couldn't get the card, even at what I believed was the overpriced MSRP of 1199. I thought the card should have come in at 999, especially the release date being so far after the RTX 3090, and of course the RTX 3080 at these MSRP levels offering much better value for money. But today we're taking a look at the RTX 3070 Ti, or if you're into Star Wars, you can call it the RTX 3070 Ti. 3080 Ti. Here they come. And this graphics card is going to follow suit like the 3080 Ti in really fitting in at not such a great place at 599 MSRP. And to get into the why of this, it's coming in with the same amount of VRAM as the RTX 3070, albeit it's clocked higher. It's got a slightly more CUDA cores than the 3070. And of course it's priced a hundred dollars higher that of the 499 versus 599. And then the RTX 3060 Ti already came out before it. And I believe that was offering much better value for money at 399 and still sharing the same amount of VRAM. However, let's go through the benchmark numbers first and straight away we'll pull up the 1080p numbers here, which consist of Shadow of the Tomb Raider, F1 2020, Call of Duty Cold War, and also Fortnite. And now between these four games, you can see that the RTX 3070 Ti is a little bit faster. I'd call it around five to 8% faster on average than the 3070. And it kind of trades blows with the RX 6800, although the RX 6800 kind of does score the edge at 1080p. Though stepping things up to 1440p, this is where the gains slightly favor that of the 3070 Ti versus the RX 6800. And then it still pretty much holds that same difference as it did at 1080p versus the 3070. And so looking at these numbers for what they are, you can pretty much think of this thing as an overclocked 3070, but we'll let the 4K numbers show this exact trend here where with Shadow of the Tomb Raider I decided to also throw in the overclocked and undervolt numbers where all the RTX 3000 cards just like the RX series, the RDNA 2 cards, they all benefit from undervolting especially if you have a really good power supply. Now in terms of the overclocks this card did overclock quite well but that's pretty much a trend I've noticed for all RTX 3000 cards where I think though the RTX 3060 Ti, 3070 and 3070 Ti now do benefit more from overclocking because the power consumption differential isn't as great as it is on the 3080 and the 38 Ti and the 3090, for example. So if you want that extra performance out of the 3070 Ti, if you're going to get this card, just like the 3060 Ti and 3070, I would recommend overclocking to get that extra performance. Just like if you do want some extra performance, you can turn on DLSS in certain titles. Me personally, I've come accustomed to liking the balance setting and that does give you a sizable boost in FPS, making this card capable of 4K 120 Hertz gaming if you are happy with the DLSS settings, which does depend on the title, but I am starting to enjoy having DLSS on more than for instance, ray tracing, where the only title so far I've actually enjoyed having this on for was a Cyberpunk 2077. But when it comes to games like Fortnite and also Call of Duty, which I've got a standard benchmark here, you can see that the frame rates do drop significantly, even having the ray tracing on low settings. But of course you will want to use that in conjunction with DLSS to really get what I would consider a playable experience with having ray tracing on. Though as it stands with those numbers in competition to the RTX 3070, it's not as good value for money. But also when we weigh it up against the RX 6800, we can see that that card is coming with 16 gigabytes of VRAM and it's also coming in with a slightly cheaper MSRP, but it doesn't carry features like DLSS and also slightly better ray tracing from the core. However, AMD are touted to uh, have an answer to that with their upcoming FSR technology though. People keep asking me, what do you think about FSR? But ultimately I'm only gonna pass judgment on FSR once I've tried it out in a number of different titles and I can give you guys my opinion on that tech. Now let's talk about one decent thing that I feel Nvidia is doing for the market and that is introducing the hash rate limiters which is going to deter crypto miners from buying these cards at least versus the other cards out there at the moment where as it currently stands this card is about three dollars and fifty cents a day when I put it through the benchmark on nice hash and at three dollars and fifty cents it is still profitable, but it's not on Ethereum where the Ethereum rates have dropped significantly by roughly half on this card and the other cryptocurrencies, they just don't really have the volume and liquidity 
as Ethereum. So if people were going out and buying this for the altcoins and mining those, then who knows how long their time frame would be to make decent profit on these cards, which leads us to an important point about this card and how it's going to be coming out and what it's gonna be priced at. And in hindsight, that prediction seemed to be right around where it was coming in at. Uh, the 3070 Ti, you can see it based on current market rates. It's gonna come in at least, I feel, around 1,500 Aussie dollars, expected to go well over 1,000 US dollars on the open market, just simply because we've got another problem. And that's not just the cryptocurrency miners, that's the scalpers that know that gamers want these cards and they're prepared to pay more than the MSRP. So they're gonna buy them up, resell them on eBay. And it just creates such a crappy situation right now for the gamers who want to just play games. The longer this situation does go on, however, the more you're gonna have people abandoning the market. And of course, the cure for high prices is high prices. So don't pay those ridiculously high prices. That's something I'll reiterate. These cards are just simply not worth the scalpers prices. And even at the MSRP prices of these new TI cards, I'm having a tough time recommending them versus the previous release of especially the 3060 TI and of course the 3080, where they were offering, in my opinion, really good MSRP value for gamers. But returning to that norm, in my opinion, all rests on the price of cryptocurrency. And the sooner it crashes, the sooner we will see affordable graphics cards on the market. However, some final things to talk about with the card itself. I'll throw up the weight of this card on the screen, 1188 grams and dimensions is 42 mil by 269 by 118, making the 3070 Ti founders, at least the one I'm holding in my hand here, have a unique cooler that's nothing like the 3070 or like the 3080, even though it comes in closer resemblance to the 3080 cooler than it does the 3070. Now, if we look at the temperatures and noise of this card, mediocre is what I would call it, with a auto fan speed of 51% out of the box, producing 39 decibels at 76 degrees in a 23C ambient environment, moving this up to a manual fan speed of 60%, steps the noise up a little bit, but also drops the temperatures, in my opinion, significantly to a sweet spot, which I would be comfortable with if I was using this card 24 seven. Upping the speeds to 80%, the noise does start to get unbearable. And then at 100%, the noise is simply ridiculously loud to the point where I don't even think people with headphones could enjoy this experience. So it does weigh a bit more and it does have 190 mil fan on each side of the card and the metal out frame leading to the back of the card, which has a HDMI 2.1 supporting 120 Hertz 4K full RGB or 444. And then we've also got display ports and three of those. I would like to critique this and I would like to see Nvidia include two HDMI 2.1s rather than only one as I'm sure a lot of people buying the new RTX 3000 series cards are actually buying them for the HDMI 2.1s. And then for the power connector, we've got the two eight pins going into the 12 pin micro connector in the middle of the card, which is a little bit awkward. I would like to see this uh, changed in position at least to the rear of the card. I think it would actually add to the aesthetic if they did this. And then the logos itself, none of it lights up with LEDs. There's no LEDs that I saw present on this card. And with all that juicy information out of the way, it's time to make a recommendation for the RTX 3070 Ti. Now, straight away, in a perfect world where we could get these graphics cards around MSRP, my recommendation would be go get a 3070 or a 3060 Ti, especially the 3060 Ti. A much better value at 399, save your money, and then wait for another generation of graphics cards. But as it stands in this market, the 3060 Ti is pretty much the most desirable graphics card by miners for cryptocurrency in that it gives the best hash rates for the power used. So miners are always targeting 3060 Ti's, and in fact, they're probably gonna target them with higher prices than they would for a 3070 Ti, as it's gonna pay off more money per day, especially with Ethereum announcing that they're yet again pushing back the uh, proof of stake to 2022. I mean, like that wasn't expected already. And so all that considered, this card is going to be at least not as targeted by miners as a 3060 Ti would or even 3070. And so miners aren't gonna pick this up sheerly because it will use slightly more power and it will give less hash rates and that means less profit. But of course, we've still got the scalpers out there and depending on the limited supply of these cards, they're gonna pick one up. But if you can get one of these cards in the current market for close to MSRP, then of course, I think it's a no brainer. But as I said before in this review, I think the prices are realistically going to blow out to around double MSRP, meaning the gamer yet again gets screwed by this whole Ethereum and cryptocurrency market. So that's the reality of it, guys. 
And to be honest, it's just not exciting to review graphics cards right now. And the whole graphics card market isn't exciting at all. And my recommendation is if you wanna get decent value for money right now, it's gonna be the cards that use four gigabytes of VRAM or less, and they're a little bit older and less power efficient, but you'll still get a decent gaming experience out of those cards. And that's simply because the miners aren't targeting that. And also the scalpers, it's really not worth their time for the absolute margins that they're going to obtain as opposed to this card where scalpers are gonna get it for MSRP if they can, and then go straight away on eBay and try and double up their money. And for these guys, it's just simple math. They think they're going down the CAS and they got a 100% win rate on red. So they're just gonna keep putting money down on red and doubling up. And that's how they do it with Gravis cards right now. And that of course comes at the expense of the gamer who is rolling black at a 0% win rate. And they seem to be getting screwed time and time again. Though another thing that we're talking about, the external factor I've been talking about here on the channel as well with inflation, I won't actually really know those numbers until I get some of the balance sheet reports out, especially in this next quarter from Nvidia. I'm looking closely at that where you can look at certain numbers and you'll be able to tell real inflation numbers from those reports. So we'll wait for that and then we'll talk a little bit more about inflation as well, which I do think is a factor coming into the supply chains of graphics card manufacturers. Anyway, guys, with that aside, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button and also let us know in the comment section below, what do you think of the 3070 Ti and the MSRP? I mean, look, when we compare it to the 3080 Ti, I think it's not as bad. But again, comparing it against the 3080, the 3060 Ti, I just think it's really not fitting in that well, at least with the recommended prices from Nvidia, and especially coming out after the fact, usually with graphics card prices, especially TI models, when they're released this late in the cycle for the same series of card. Anyhow, love reading those thoughts and opinions, just like this question of the day here, which comes from Peter Nilsson, and they ask, what's the deal with the older version of Afterburner? Mine is no longer the red one, but is metallic gray. So this one's easy to answer. If you go into the interface tab, you can actually change how MSI Afterburner looks. I just like this simple uh, method that I've been using for years because I know where everything is. I can easily change things. Sometimes they present you uh, with different interfaces that are all over the place, but I've just stuck to the one that you guys usually see on the channel here, and you can easily change that to how you like it. So I hope that answers that question, and I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. If you stayed this far and you're enjoying that Tech S content, then be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye. Oh, 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 oh.